How's everybody doing? Okay, thanks for tuning in. This will be the final uh, episode on this particular subject matter for now. Uh, the low ground cover layers. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some clips, going to intersperse them and try to keep it interesting. Because a lot of the stuff, like if I was to document every move I made, it would just be put people to sleep, right? Okay, here's a close-in vignetted shot, and I'll show you how I cut in shadow. Like you see with this grass here. I mean, it looks pretty good, right? There's nothing wrong with it. But I'll show you what a little bit of shadowing does. This is just one of many paint layers now, because we have all our tuft and static grass layers in place, right? I would say there's three or four here, or maybe five, not including the ground. There was a couple of layers here. Actually, it's just dirt from outside, but it was airbrushed and then dry brushed with earth. But here, so we're cutting a little bit of that dark green XF61. Watch what happens when we add a little bit of... Remember, it's very low pressure here. I like to do a little bit of the edge too. Okay, now we'll get a little bit in here. It's okay if you get a bit of green on the tie. You know, because I mean that, that that could be, you know, just the shadowed algae or, you know. So that's what I do. So some people will say, oh, to me, a paint, it's kind of expensive, isn't it, to, uh, you know, to um, spray on the scenery. This is a spit worth of paint. Now, I haven't touched this cup. This is a tiny amount. I mean, that's the advantage of the airbrush. It stretches your paint. Right? It's one of the whole points of owning one. So I just cut this in like this. Just draw a line around it, dark olive line. Olive will always work with earth tone colors because it's an earth tone color. It's got lots of brown in it. Go off camera a bit there, sorry. So that's what I do. Cut that in. I'm gonna cut in a bit here. You know, and if you want to make the grass look uh, like it's dried out and straw colored, all right, just use buff or yellow or just a lighter earth tone, right? Learn to spray your static grass. You can get a really, really nice deep effect with your shadow and your light. You can add other greens in here and then a little bit of yellow for highlighting. Okay, so this pattern that you see here, this was established with the glue, right? Like when we first laid the glue, like that's when you get creative. You just, just build it and just draw, just paint lines, you know, of glue, and then you sprinkle all your static grass on. That's how you establish this, right? Just use your imagination or use a photo. You know, it's always a good thing to use a photo if you're not sure or confident about how you want to do it, but just, you know. Create a sort of random pattern like that, and then when you vacuum it up, that's what you're left with once it's outlined in the dark olive, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... See this green static grass here? See, it doesn't matter what color it is, right? You can paint it, see? With the airbrush. And this paint is super thin. Like, it is so thin. Like, I start with isopropyl alcohol, and then I tint it with green in a bottle. You know, I could paint this whole layout easy green 
like this with one bottle of Tamiya if I really wanted to. Okay, so it's it, it paint with an airbrush. I can't stress it enough. In the long run, you'll save hundreds of dollars in paint, literally. It just stretches the paint. So it depends how long you stay in the area. Like, see, I can go really light here. See, the idea is to have it thin. Like, you want it thin, thin. See how there's, there's sort of a randomness to it, right? I'll get in a little bit closer on another area over to the left. So we want to, want to just cut this in side of that dark line there, see? You can go into it a bit too. Like, don't be afraid to... But just see that line as a shadow and just play around. Just, you know, here's a little bit down here, right? Now, if we want to make it look dried grass later, we're going to use some of that yellow green. Now, this is going to be a kind of a moss, this, this two mil here. Okay, but I, I want to use this uh, low light color, remember? Shadow is the olive. This flat green is the low light. And then the yellow green, which I'll show you, will be our highlight. Okay. I love doing this part. I think I mentioned it before. It's just so relaxing and uh, so satisfying to uh, be able to do this kind of thing. And it, it doesn't, you need to be a pro to do this. That's people that think that you got to be professional like this. They're just legends in their own mind. That's all they are. They need to share with the community and, and help the community grow and learn. Get them over the fear. It's just fear. Fear is the big one. Am I off camera there? Fear is the, the biggest hindrance. But once you, you know, it's kind of like when, remember, like, like I don't know if you were swam a lot when you were a kid, but I used to be scared of cold water. Like we, we grew up learning how to swim because we grew up on the beach, but on the West Coast. But I was, I didn't like cold water. But I always knew that once you dove in, oh, it was great. So dive in, right? Okay, so you're still with me? <laughs> Look, I wish I could shorten this. Uh, I don't like doing lengthy videos, but this is the only way, this is the best way that I can try to get this across in the most efficient manner. So for those of you that, you know, are still with uh, me at this stage, then you'll probably go on to master this one day soon. Okay, so let's just summarize quickly. Before I show you the buff, we talk about the earth. So, remember how earlier, so uh, we applied XF5 flat green on the, this is the short um, static grass that we just have sprinkled over glue, right? So we sprayed it with flat green, and then we went over it with this yellow green after we cut in these dark green tracing lines. Remember that I showed before over by the blue building? So we got flat green, yellow green, and dark green. So those are those three colors. And then in here, we have earth. More like this color. I already started doing the buff, which I'm going to show you in a second. So then we have earth. But these are the five go-to colors that I use mostly when I do my scenery, okay? They're all listed there, as you can see. Now I'm going to show you here. What I did here is I took some dark green. Remember, I don't use black. I mean, have black in your paint kit for darkening things, but don't use it on your models. I mean, you can if you want, but you know, like there's no such thing as black, right? Like, look at this dark green. Like, it's like a black, a coal black almost, but it has light refraction to it. You'll see what I mean when I hit it with buff. So what I did was, is I just I mean, with an airbrush, you can paint over, it's such a thin layer, such a micro thin layer, you could put 50 coats on with an airbrush and you wouldn't build up paint hardly, but because it, it's so thin, it's like ink, right? So here's the ties at dark, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the buff. I'm going to highlight this, like this dark line, like sort of camouflaged look, right, for you armor modelers. I'm going to show you how I tone that down in the same way. Like I think armor modelers that are maybe tuning in to watch this, I think they'll probably grasp this probably more quickly than some if they already use an airbrush and understand this principle. It's the same kind of principle when we paint our terrain, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of buff then. 
very very thin okay and I'm just going to cut in a little bit on these earth there I'm just going to very like a lot of um, see that's full air and you just think as you pull the trigger back for paint a bit of practice and you'll get it right so what I want to do here is get that paint flowing and then just a little tiny bit you want to blend out pretend like get such a small amount of paint coming out so it's like a pencil almost you know you can just rub it back and forth like that now watch what happens when you go up onto this ballast here and the ties I want to clean up those highlight those ties a bit watch the ballast Remember, less is better, right? See? See how I talked about, you know, with the layers showing through? This is how you get the filters. This is... If you want it to be brighter or stronger, you just stay on it longer, see? You'll even catch, like, you'll get so good at this, like, just in a short period of time, trust me you will, if you just practice it, that you'll actually be able to catch the, just the tiny little stones. You can just create some really, really cool effects. See that? This is buff, right? XF57. And it just knocks down some of that dark olive. get rid of that line you know that sort of camouflage effect and it just leaves enough so there's a hint of shadow and transition there you can almost see like watch how thin the paint is here watch I'll hit it on the tie for a bit see and that's how you do it and you can take this buff to to grass too you know to little parts of grass here Get it going light, and you can spray and paint and tone down parts of the grass as well. It's just such a powerful tool. Alright, see how that's transformed that? A little siding like that?